Hello and welcome to today's video. Today, we're going to take a look and review the Panzoil 400 from Las Vegas. And it was, uh, it was actually fantastic. Um, I, I really enjoyed today's race. We'll just jump into that part. There was... A little bit of a feeling that maybe we're gonna go to mile and a half and be boring. <laughs> you know, that's that's normally what happens, um, especially coming off of Daytona, Daytona Road Course, Homestead was wild. It's like okay, there's potential. This is gonna be a little bit more boring. Las Vegas isn't one of the most exciting tracks. It's definitely a little better on the mile and a half list, um, but it, it's nothing like typically too spectacular. But man, there was there was some wild racing. We had so many side by side laps after restarts. Normally, you know, it's a lap or two. But there was 10, 11 laps side by side. Drivers are actually able to go up and make passes. Like it was it was pretty good just to be able to see, you know, not just okay, you're stuck behind somebody for a whole race. I forgot what race it was last year. It might have been Kansas. Where Kevin Harvick was faster than Joe Logano, just couldn't get by him for the whole race. Um, so you know, it it wasn't like that though. It was, you know, cars making passes, and we had you know six cars going for the lead at one point. It was so wild. And overall, it was a it was a pretty solid race. So there was a lot of instances where we've seen like just all the team cars basically move to the front. We had. All the Hendrick cars at the front, all the Penske cars at the front, all the Joe Gibbs cars at the front at different moments. That was just a very, very cool thing to see as well. The thing, like, basically at a moment, one team just pops, went to the front. And it just, you know, that kept being a situation that was popping up. It was pretty cool. In the end, though, it was the Hendrick cars that were really the best at this race. We saw um, William Byron lead early. Chase Elliott went up there. He led a bunch. But ultimately, it was Kyle Larson who had the best car and was honestly killing it uh, for a good amount of that race. And, you know, he came in there, he got that win. So Kyle Larson's first win, obviously, since his suspension last year. Uh, so he did not get a win in 2020. He did win back in 2019 at Dover. So that was cool to see him back. It's good to see him sort of winning, doing well. I mean, I think a lot of people thought, okay, he's going to do good in a Hendrick car. And I think a lot of people thought, you know, there's going to be a time when Kyle Larson needs to not be Ganassi and he's going to do good. And I think we're seeing that. He did well the week before as well at Homestead. So overall, uh, brilliant, brilliant race for Kyle Larson. So let's take a look here at the standings. Uh, so a little update to it. Denny Hamlin's uh, now first. Of course, we're not looking at players. We're just looking at regular standings. Denny Hamlin, Brad Kozlowski, and Kyle Larson are the top three at the moment. Kevin Harvick fell down a little bit. He was in the second place, I believe. Back down to seventh. Not a brilliant race. He fell back pretty much lap one. Uh, got a little contact with Eric Jones and... That's pretty much it. He was back there. I think he finished a lap down. Not his best race. Um, you know, my prediction to win didn't go brilliant, but, you know, it's whatever. Not worried about it. Um, so far, this year, predictions have been 0 for 4. Playoff-wise, Kyle Larson, Christopher Bell, Michael McDowell, and William Byron are the four locked-in drivers. That's kind of wild to see. Uh, again, a lot of these drivers, three of the four, were not playoff drivers last year. Christopher Bell did not make it. Michael McDowell did not make it. Kyle Larson obviously was suspended. He would have probably made it had he not been suspended. William Byron did make it, though. But um, Definitely wild. That means that we're going to see... You know, drivers that were in the playoffs last year will not be in it. Uh, again, I said in my preview video of the NASCAR season, 
the only one of these so far that hasn't been in it, in that prediction was uh, Magma Now, because I said all 400 cars would be in. And I think I said all four Joe Gibbs cars will be in as well. So, no real surprise there. The wild thing is that Kyle Larson and Chris Rivell each got a win before the track that most people thought they were going to get wins. I think people thought Kyle Larson and Chris Rivell would be going at it when it comes to Bristol Dirt. But they've both already got wins. So, who knows? we still got Phoenix and Atlanta before Bristol Dirt. But one of those two have a good shot to be uh, the first repeat winner if we get two new winners in the next two races. Uh, it's still wild, though, to look at this this list and not see Denny Hamlin, Joe Logano, Brad Kozlowski, Martin Truex, Kevin Harvick, those drivers, like any of those ones, without wins, four races in the season, very, very interesting. Um, considering... At this point last year, Denny Hamlin had one, Joe Logano had two. I forgot who else had a win, but it was pretty much uh, those drivers at the beginning. Kevin Harvey came on later and sort of dominated most of the season, but yeah, it's a very wild season. Fox has been hyping this up as best season ever, and it's been uh, living up to something wild. Uh, that is for sure. Uh, overall results here so uh Brad Kuzowski was second he he had a solid solid run there a few seconds behind Kyle Busch Denny Hamlin next two and Ryan Blaney got a top five he's not had a great start of the season so to see him up there in fifth is pretty good as well Martin Truex Christopher William Byron Joe Logano and then Eric Jones in 10th uh that's pretty impressive Eric Jones getting 10th with um you know Richard Petty uh, was it Richard Petty Motorsports? Not the team name these days. You know, uh, see them get a top 10. That's pretty impressive. Did you get Ricky Stenhouse in 11th? Like, what? <laughs> this is getting wild. Chase Elliott in 13th. Uh, he had a little bit of an incident earlier hitting into Kurt Busch. Like I said, Kevin Harvick in 20th. Michael McDowell was 17th, actually. Still solid for that team. Any other notable? Oh, Alex Bowman's in 27th. He did not have a uh, good entry onto Pit Road. I believe he had a flat tire. He was in the top 10, though. He was doing pretty good, and in the end, didn't work out for him. Bubba Wallace in 28th. A little bit of a recovery there for his team, actually. Uh, they had some issues. I believe it was oil lines. Again, a lot of these things you expect from a newer team. 2311, as much as they are. You know, getting help from Joe Gibbs, getting, you know, some total support. They are still a new team, so there's still going to be these issues to work out. Um, but yeah, see him in 28th. A little interesting there. I think, you know, once the summertime rolls around, I think you'll see them start to improve a little bit. But a lot of these races got to get to a track the first time. That kind of thing. Eric Amarola, 38th. Uh, last place on the on the field he um i don't really know i just i don't think i was in the room when it happened uh but i saw that he he had hit the wall i might have had a flat tire um uh, so not a good run for him he started in 28th wow surprising eric amarillo not not killing it this year i guess either so interesting overall next race is on next sunday same time? Yes. Next Sunday, 3.30 on Fox. Phoenix Raceway. Instacart 500. We will be uh, watching that. Of course, we will do a preview of that. So uh, make sure you check that out. And I hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys in the next one.